Hey guys, this is a tutorial on Mo's algorithm, which is an offline algorithm for answering range queries. And we'll be using the problem Little Elephant and Array on Code Forces. So you should go ahead and read this problem on your own. Now that you've read the problem, we basically have range queries where for each query we have to find the number of elements such that each element occurs exactly x times where x is the element itself this basically means that let's say we consider element 5 then 5 has to occur 5 times in that range we consider 10 10 has to occur 10 times in that range or if we consider any other element x it has to occur exactly x times in that range before we get started make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and press the bell icon to stay notified about new videos So I said that Mo's is an offline algorithm. This basically means that we don't answer the queries in the order in which they appear in the input. We change their order, we do some sorting and we answer them in a way that's convenient to us. We can use Mo's algorithm when if we consider some random range and let's say we already know the answer to this range we can very easily extend it and by extend I mean for example increase the right end by one or decrease it by one or do the same to the left end and if we add or remove an element we can easily recalculate our answer pretty quickly and of course there are certain constraints on the input for which this algorithm works but we will be coming to those later so Mohs is basically just a clever way to answer queries and what we do is we take our array and we divide it into square root n blocks where n is the size of the array. So I have this array of 16 integers then I've divided it into 4 blocks because square root of 16 is 4 and now we group our queries and answer queries in each block at once. So what we do is, we consider the left endpoints of queries. So these indices, indices represent the block uh, queries with these left points go into. So queries with left points 1 to 4 go into block 1, 5 to 8 go into block 2, 9 to 12 go into block 3, 13 to 16 go into block 4. And I have these sample queries over here let's divide them into blocks so let's look at queries with left points 1 to 4 we have 2 comma 9 3 comma 7 4 comma 8 and 5 to 8 6 comma 11 8 comma 11 9 to 12 we have 11 comma 15 and 13 to 16 we have 13 to 16 this should be 16 Okay, so these are all of our queries. And now for each block, we take a look at their queries and we sort them in non decreasing order of their right endpoints. So this would now look like 3, 7, 4, 8, 2, 9. 6, 11, 8, 11, and these, there are just, there is just one query in each block, so this remains the same. 
Now what we are actually doing is we are setting a fixed routine for our queries. So for each block what we do is we set two pointers. We have a left pointer and a right pointer. Let's call them L and R. For each block we want this R pointer to move at most n times. So we are restricting its movement to n elements. And that's across all queries. So each query doesn't get n elements, but the sum of, so we should basically answer all queries while moving this right pointer to the end. For each block. And we restrict our left pointer to just that block. So each block has square root n elements and we've restricted our left pointer to move within this block. And because each block has square root n elements, let's look at what happens. We sorted our queries in non-decreasing order of right endpoint. So what we can do is, let's say we have the range 3 comma 7, which is this. Now the next query has a right endpoint greater than this because we've sorted them. So we can easily extend this to the right. The right pointer is over here. And the next was left point was 4. So we also removed this to the right. And then after this, so like I said, if we can easily uh, calculate the answer for this change, then we can use Mohs algorithm. And in this problem, little elephant and array, we can. And I'll show you how in a while. So we shifted our left and right pointers from 7 to 8 and 3 to 4. Now the next query, right pointer is at 9. So we shift it again. And this time our left pointer goes to 2. So we shift it by 1 and then we shift it by 1 again because it was at 4. Now let's look at what happens for each block. And each block, because our right endpoints are sorted in non-decreasing order, the total operations done by the right pointer is n. So right pointer does n operations in total per block. Let's look at how many operations our left pointer does. Because we because our left points aren't in any particular order, but but we know that they are restricted to each block where each block is of size square root n. So in the worst case, we have a query and one end of the block. So let's say we had a query here, then we go to the other end and then we keep on shuffling between them. That's the worst case scenario for each block. And in this case, our left pointer moves square root of n times because each block has a size of square root n. So left pointer and it, it moves square root n times in the worst case per query. So this is q times square root of n, where q is the number of queries in that block. And we have square root of n blocks. So if we have queries in each block, our right pointer does, the, does our total work of n into square root n, because square root n blocks and n operations per block. And in total, it doesn't matter where our queries are. For each query, our left pointer can move at most square root of n blocks, square root of n elements. So the total work done by our left pointer is q into square root of n. Also, we sorted these queries. So that is another 
q into log base 2 of q operations. In total, the time complexity for answering all queries will be of n square root n plus q square root n which is of n plus q into square root of n. So again, in each block, our left pointer moves at mo of per query, it moves um, square root of n elements, and a right pointer does a total of n operations. So this results in a total time complexity of o of n plus q into square root of n, and that is basically Mo's algorithm. Now you can use other data structures such as Fenwick trees, etc., to answer more complicated queries. But now let's take a look at how we can solve this problem, little elephant and array. So now let's say that initially our, both of our pointers were over, our left pointer was over here and right pointer is over here. For our first query, we will keep on incrementing our right pointer until it hits the query endpoint and after that we'll also increment our left pointer to get it to where it needs to be and we keep on per element so let's say our right pointer was over here when we move it here we increment the count of x so let's say this element was x we maintain a global frequency array and we say that frequency of x increases by 1 because x lies within this query range we increase the frequency by 1 and we do this for all elements until r reaches where it needs to be now while doing this if frequency of x is ever equal to x this is basically what the problem is then we can increment our global answer and and now when we want to shrink our range let's say the right endpoint moves back we remove elements and let's say we remove this x before removing x if the frequency of x was equal to x then we decrement our global answer because we are about to remove it and if its frequency is x its frequency will become x minus 1 so we have to subtract 1 from our answer Also, if our frequency was initially x while adding it, we also need to subtract 1 from our answer because after adding 1 to the frequency, it becomes x plus 1. And the same we do for the left pointer. Now, one thing we have to make sure of is that we always incre increment our pointers before decrementing them. So we should always try to increase our query range before shrinking it this is because let's say we have a case like this where we initially um, what we basically don't want is for L and R to overlap and that is if L was over here we don't want R and L to cross over each other. We always want them to remain on separate sides. And now let's take a look at some code for this. So I've made a struct for queries which just stores their left endpoint, right endpoint, and their index. And we need to store their index because we aren't answering them in input order. So 
we maintain the answer for each query and then in the end we just print it so this is a custom comparator for sorting I take the left endpoint of the queries and I divide it by the block size which will tell us which block it's in I've set this fixed block size which is this um, which is square root 10 to the power 5 you could do this or you could you, you could just calculate the square root of the input every time it doesn't matter that much for some problems it might but anyway after doing this we check if they both lie in the same block we wanted to sort the right endpoints in non-decreasing order so we do that but if they lie in different blocks we want to we want the query with the that lies in an earlier block to be before a query which lies in a block after it so here we're just reading an input these are our queries and I'm sorting our queries it uses this custom comparator I and J are our query pointers now for every query in our queries array we first try to increase our query range so this operate function basically takes in the pointer and the delta of the element so if we're increasing it takes it one takes it as one otherwise we give it a minus one now let's see what happens so first we set x equal to the element in the array and one thing to notice in this problem is that our elements can be as large as 10 to the power 9 but our array can have at most 10 to the power 5 elements so we don't need to worry about um, elements which are greater than an array size because we can anyway never reach that any that many elements in any array in any range so if that x is greater than or equal to the max and value then we just return because we don't care about it and otherwise now this check is important because we're about to modify the frequency of the element so if that frequency is already equal to x and we increment or decrement it it won't be equal to x so we have to subtract one from our answer which is doing this now we can add one or minus one to our answer which is this delta variable and now in the end if the frequency is finally equal to x we in increment our answer so we're basically increasing our query range and then we shrink it and before proceeding to answer the next query we said the answer for that query to be equal to per answer which is the global answer variable so this was a short video on Mo's algorithm i hope you enjoyed this make sure to subscribe like and share this video if you enjoyed it thanks for watching